Hello everyone, today is the day we get to finally talk about every single iPhone setting and pretty much explaining it for all of you. Now my iPhone is on iOS 15 and the settings app looks like this, so let's go and open it up. And now we're going to get into it. So a lot of these are pretty much the same thing over and over again, so I'm not going to go super crazy in detail. But the very first setting some of you may not even know is this top section. Now when you click on it, it pretty much will take you to your iCloud settings. So all of these options right here will go ahead and showcase and let you modify different things within your iCloud and your Apple ID. So the first portion, obviously name, phone number, password security, different things up here pretty much are specifically for your Apple ID, as well as different app store options as well, which is really cool. So if you ever want to modify anything for your Apple ID, your iCloud account, or your app store settings, well, they're all pretty much right here. Now, underneath all this stuff is a bunch of iPhones. So whichever iPhones you have, most probably it's just going to be like one or two. But since I wrote, you review a lot of iPhones, I have a lot of devices right here. And at the very bottom, you'll see this little sign out button, and you can go ahead and sign out of it if you want to. Now, swiping back out, that pretty much covers the first option. Now, here you'll pretty much just sometimes get some different ads that Apple sends to you. On iOS 15, they started doing this. So if you ever want to sign up for Apple Fitness TV or whatever, well, you'll have that option up there. Now, these four segments, never change actually these eight seconds actually the rest of these really never change too much so up here are your cell connections so if you want to enable airplane mode you go ahead and toggle that on wi-fi we can pretty much click here and connect to other wi-fi signals if we want to you can go ahead and you know modify some other hotspot settings as well swiping out of there we have our bluetooth connections which are next so if you ever want to modify or change any of your bluetooth connection settings we can go right here and add devices delete devices pretty much here as well so that's another big option for you and under cellular we pretty much have the option now i don't have a sim card here but you'll basically be able to see your cell network provider as well as some other settings too which is a really cool thing and i'm glad apple put this in you know especially for the top portion now the next four items are kind of random you know these ones are cell connection these ones are kind of random so under notifications we'll basically have the option of modifying the notifications that we get for our you know applications so an example like this would be like instagram if we want to be notified of instagram dms and stuff we go enable this same thing with mail messages you really shouldn't modify this too much unless you're seeing that you're not getting notified of an app then you would come in here and click on the app and make sure you have notifications on now hopping out of this one sounds and haptics this is pretty much just ringtones sounds you know different things like that if you like keyboard clicks if you want your lock sound system haptics which is like vibrations you'll go and come here to pretty much modify those but very rarely would you come here unless you're trying to change your ringtone from my experience now focus mode is now kind of like do not disturb mode so within focus mode you have the option to pretty much go ahead and change whatever you want to here if you want to add a focus mode aka new or do not disturb mode we can go here and modify those things as well screen time is another option which is pretty much periodical control or if you want to limit the amount you're using for certain applications well you can add a screen time for certain apps and you can go ahead and limit and you know kind of you know be more aware of the apps and how much you're using them and all those different things so that's another big one that came within i think ios 12 or 13 now these options are kind of interesting the general setting is the number one setting you're probably going to see every single day i talk about this a lot within general it's a whole different ecosystem here so about iphone you'll basically see all this different information about your iphone very cool thing software update a massive little option that you probably want to click on every once in a while and you'll basically be able to update your iphone this way so you want to go in this option every once in a while every couple weeks to see if there's an update available airdrop i very rarely ever come into this option it's just airdrop settings airplane handoff i really don't ever do this either but it may but if you want to go ahead and you know modify these you can do that here picture in picture if you want to have you know picture in picture enabled you can go and enable it there carplay i typically just keep this on i guess there's not even a setting to keep it off iphone storage this is awesome it'll go ahead and show you how much storage you have left on your iphone it'll also give you a breakdown of all the different apps that are on your device too so you can go ahead and delete these if you want to that's something i would recommend to look at background app refresh essentially if you want apps to not have access to your data in the background aka if you don't want to be notified of them or whatever you can go ahead and turn them off here and it can save a little bit of battery life too. Date and time settings, you can modify them here, which is cool. Keyboard, I very rarely ever go in there. Font, language and region, a dictionary, pretty self-explanatory. VPN and device management, if you want to add a manual VPN, you can do that here. Legal and regulatory, never go on it. And if you ever want to actually reset or factory reset your iPhone, you can click here. And not only can you back up your iPhone for up here if you're on iOS 15, but you can also erase all content and settings and reset your iPhone as well. 
So that covers that one up. That's a big one. Control center, you can pretty much modify your control center, which is on the bottom, uh, top right. If you go and see this, you can modify this within here, which is really cool. Display and brightness, if you ever want to toggle on light or dark mode, or if you want to increase your brightness, well, you can do that here. But you can also do that within the control center. True tone, I would recommend keeping on. These settings are pretty much just kind of self-explanatory. Night shift, auto lock, race to wake if you want to have it so it you know opens the display. I typically turn it off, but you can enable it too. Hopping out of that one. Home screen, I never really turned this one off. I would recommend having where it says, you know, recently downloaded apps. I'd recommend having that add to home screen because I don't really like going to the app library. And you can have notifications show in app library as well. Accessibility, this is a really big one. So these options, I there's a lot of them here. But essentially, if you ever want to modify anything within accessibility, this is pretty much where I would recommend going to. Now, some of the big phone, now voiceover, zoom, display and text size, pretty self-explanatory. If you want to increase or decrease the text or have bold text and all that good stuff, you can do it here. Motion, if you want to go ahead and actually limit pro motion on your iPhone, you can do that here if you have a pro iPhone. Touch, you can do accessibility and different, so many different things like that. The side button, you can also modify if you want it for Siri or classic voice. If you ever want to modify some things with an AirPods, you can do that here. You can also enable sound recognition here, which is really awesome. And if you can also do, you know, per app settings, which we've talked about before, accessibility shortcuts, so many different things like that within accessibility. Wallpaper, pretty self-explanatory. If you want to change the wallpaper, you can do one of the built-in ones there. Siri and search, if you ever want to modify anything within Siri, you have the option here too, as well a bunch of apps that can go ahead and actually utilize Siri as well, which is really awesome. Face ID and passcode, and this is a big one. If you ever want to modify your face ID, passcode, or touch ID on an iPhone with a home button, we well, can go right here and you can pretty much just modify those settings here. You can also, you know, take off face ID if you don't want to and suit for a passcode, or you can change any of those settings too. And you can even set up Apple Pay here too, which is really cool. Another big thing, emergency SOS. If you want to be able to hit those buttons and everything, you can do it here. Exposure notifications, which is a new one for COVID. You can turn these on and be notified of those specific exposure notifications. Battery is a big one too. Not only does it show you how which apps are taking the most amount of battery and everything, but under battery health, you can actually see how much your maximum capacity is and see if you ever need a battery repair. You can also toggle on low power mode here. And under privacy, it just shows you different location services, app tracking, which is a big new one, as well as all these other things you can modify within your specific notifications for privacy, which is really awesome. Now under App Store, this is a really big one too. Essentially, if you want to modify any more things within the App Store that we didn't talk about before, well, you can modify those things within here, which is another big option. Under Wallet and Apple Pay, you can pretty much set up Apple Pay here if you're ever interested in it. Now under this section, it's a bunch of other smaller things, which isn't other, like, it's not super crazy. Under Passwords, I'm not going to get in it, but it shows you all the passwords that you have on your device if you have set up. Under mail, you can modify some more mail accounts and everything like that, which is cool. Under contacts, you can modify your contacts and everything. Under calendar, you can add more accounts for calendar right here, which is something I do all the time. You can also change some calendar settings down here too, which is really cool. Under notes, nothing crazy. You can add more accounts that I've done before, not on my personal phone. And some other options here. And I would recommend going through here and changing these because I use notes all the time. And I change these things all the time as well. Under reminders, same exact thing. It's pretty much just more things you can modify. Under voice memos, this can go ahead and actually go ahead and enable location-based naming. Location, you can give it access. And so many different things there. Under phone, I don't have a SIM card, but you can go and modify more phone things. Under messages and FaceTime, essentially, if you ever want to turn on messages, iMessage, or if you ever want to turn on FaceTime, we'll hear the toggles for that. And you can go ahead and enable or and you can go ahead and enable more things, including this eye contact feature, which is really interesting. Under Safari, if you ever want to clear your web history or any other Wi-Fi settings here, you know, for Safari and stuff, we can go here and modify those as well. Clear history and website data is a big one. And you can also change on iOS 15 where the top bar and the bottom bar are basically right there. Another big thing is news. I never really use news or stocks or the weather app or the translate app. I never really use any of these applications, but pretty much for the rest of these, it'll allow you to you know, modify those things within these settings. Like I said, I don't really use these apps, but if you use them, well, you can go and modify more things with them within this specific settings panel. Now in the next section, nothing crazy. Again, we just have our music toggle here. If you ever want to change the EQ or if you want to change, you know, the streaming quality of your specific settings for your Apple Music, we can go do that here. I'm not even signed in. Apple TV, same exact thing, pretty much more or less the same. Under photos, if you ever want to turn on iCloud photos or you want to go ahead and change some other things within photos, 
you can do that here. I'd recommend keeping this on Keep Originals, but you can keep this on Automatic as well. But pretty much towards the bottom, there's not a lot of crazy stuff until you get into camera. This is a big one. So if you ever want to change the quality of your photos, well, you can go ahead and do that within here. You can change the resolution of your videos here, unless you want to do that within the camera app, which we have the ability to. But you can also do that right here. The formats you can also change if you want to do it, the HEIC, the HEIC, or you can do it for JPEG or DOM movie or whatever it is MP4. You can preserve your iCloud. You can preserve your camera settings here, which I would recommend doing you can turn on different modes here and that's a big one this you know option i'd recommend going into because it's a big one that most of you may actually end up using these three i never really ever go into books it's just ibooks podcasts you can change your podcast settings in game center i don't even want to go into it because i never use game center at all so if you're into it you can use it there tv provider honestly never use it but i guess you can stream tv on your thing now here is where things get interesting. The rest of these options and settings are pretty much per app. So if you ever want to change anything for any of these applications, we can go down here and you can change them here. These are all going to be different for you. So, you know, I can go through and explain each one of these, but it's going to be different per person. So I'd recommend going through here. They pretty much do the same thing. So you can enable background app refresh, Siri and search, you can allow tracking, and you can change the language too. Some of these have some notification settings built in. So if I go into something like Instagram, I think you can enable notifications, you can modify those, you can give camera access and microphone access and so many different things. So all these are going to be different per person, but you can pretty much modify them here too. So those are pretty much all of these settings that you have on your iPhone. Now, if you ever want to search for a setting too, you can pretty much just go up here, click the search button, and you can search for the specific setting here as well. But that pretty much covers up all the big ones that some of you may be in, you know, hitting up or something like that. <laughs> If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.